So we have a nice little equation here that has some rational expressions in it. And, and like always, pause the video and, and see if you can figure out which x's satisfy this equation. All right, let's work through it together. Now, when I see things in the denominator like this, my instinct is to try to not have denominators like this. And so what we could do is, to get rid of this x minus 1 in the denominator on the left-hand side, we can multiply both sides of the equation times x minus 1. x minus 1. So we're going to multiply both sides by x minus 1. And once again, the whole point of doing that is so that we get rid of this x minus 1 in the denominator right over here. And then since to get rid of this x plus 1 in the denominator over here, we can multiply both sides of the equation times x plus 1. So x plus 1. Multiply both sides times x plus 1. And so what is that going to give us? Well, on the left-hand side, that is going to x minus 1 divided by x minus 1 is just going to be 1 for the x's where, for, for the x's where that's defined, for x not being equal to 1. And so we're going to have x plus 1 times negative 2x plus 4. So let me write that down. So we have x plus, I think I'm going to need some space, so let me make sure I don't write too big. x plus 1 times negative 2x, negative 2x plus 4 is going to be equal to, now if we multiply both of these times 3 over x plus 1, the x plus 1 is going to cancel with the x plus 1, and we're going to be left with 3 times x minus 1. So that is going to be 3x minus 3, 3x minus 3, and then minus, minus 1 times both of these. So 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. So minus 1 times x minus 1 times x plus 1. All I did is I multiplied, took the x minus 1 times x plus 1, multiplied it times each of these terms. When I multiplied it times this first term, the x plus 1 and the x plus 1 canceled. So I just had to multiply 3 times x minus 1. And then for the second term, I just multiplied it times both of these. And now you might recognize this, if you have something x plus 1 times x minus 1, that's going to be x squared minus 1. So I could rewrite all of this right over here as being equal to as being equal to x squared minus 1. And once again, that's because this is the same thing as x squared minus 1. And since I'm subtracting an x squared minus 1, actually let me just, I don't want to do too much in, on one step. So let's go to the next step. So I could multiply this out. So I could multiply x times negative 2x, which would give us negative 2x squared, x times 4, which is going to give us plus 4x. And I could multiply 1 times negative 2x, so I'm going to subtract 2x. And then 1 times 4, which is going to be plus 4. And then that is going to be equal to, that is going to be equal to, we have 3x minus 3, and then we can distribute this negative sign, so we could say minus x squared plus 1. And over here, we can simplify it a little bit. This is going to be, that is 4x minus 2x is going to be, let me make sure I didn't write over, yep, 4x minus 2x, so that would be 2x. And so this is simplified to, let's see, well this is, we have a negative 3 and a 1, so those two together are going to be equal to subtracting a 2. So we can rewrite everything as, we'll do it in a neutral color now, negative 2x squared plus 2x plus 4 is equal to negative x squared plus 3x plus 3x minus 2. Now we can try to get all of this business onto the right hand side. So let's subtract it from both sides. So we're going to subtract, or we're, so we'll add x squared to both sides. Add x squared. That gets rid of this white x, this white negative x squared. We subtract 3x from both sides. Subtract 3x from both sides. Add 2 to both sides. Add 2. And we will be left with, we are going to end up with, let's see, negative 2x squared plus x squared is negative x squared. 2x minus 3x is negative x. And then 4 plus 2 is 6 is going to be equal to, well, that's going to cancel with that. That, that is equal to 0. 
I don't like having this negative on the x squared. So let's multiply both sides times negative 1. And so if I do that, so if I just take the negative of both sides, so if I just multiply that times negative 1, same thing as taking the negative of both sides, I'm going to get I'm going to get positive x squared plus x minus 6 is equal to 0. And we're making some good progress here. So we can factor this. And actually, let me just do it right over here so that we can see the original problem. So if I were to factor this, what two numbers, their product is negative 6. They're going to have different signs since their product is negative. And they add up to 1, the coefficient on the first degree term. Well, positive 3 and negative 2 work. So I can rewrite this as x plus 3 times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Did I do that right? Yeah, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 3x minus 2x is positive x. All right, so I just factored, I just wrote this in this quadratic in factored form. And so the way that you get this equaling 0 is if either one of those equals 0. x plus 3 equals 0, or x minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, this is going to happen if you subtract 3 from both sides. You get, that's going to happen if x is equal to negative 3. Or over here, if you add 2 to both sides, x is equal to 2. So either one of these will satisfy, but we want to be careful. We want to make sure that our original equation isn't going to be undefined for either one of these. And negative 3 does not make either of the denominators equal to 0, so that's cool. And positive 2 does not make either of the denominators equal to 0. So it looks like we're in good shape. There's two solutions to, to that equation. If one of them made the deno either any of the denominators equal to 0, then they, wouldn't have, then they would have been extraneous solutions. They would have been solutions for some of our intermediate steps, but not for the actual original equations with the expressions as they were written. But this we can feel good about, because neither of these make any of these denominators equal to 0.